Crani, take it away, boys. Thank you very much, Mr. Vukan. Yes, indeed, we are back on overpass, and, uh, well, we're ready for a pretty good game. I am joined by Scrawny. Flakes has had to go to be fed to the fish. Scrawny, how you doing? Pretty fantastic, Harold. It's always a pleasure to be by your side. You got jokes, I give you that, but wizards have a frag grenade. Do you have one of those? I do, actually, yeah, just in case. Um, you never know what might happen. I've seen a lot of films about the, uh, the Pacific War. And I always think, well, if I'm going to get blown up, you'll go with me. It's a good mentality to have. Good uh, good sacrifices must be made. Currently, we've got Dendi inside of the connector. Early control here being taken up by the T-side. Wizards more than happy to lie in wait as they do have that three-man stack here towards the B-site. Zepton going to be making contact. Pushed up, keeping his eyes forward. Rob takes one to the dome, though. The first to go down. And now I'm sure we're going to see Dendi try to transition into the A-site strike. There are two defenders here to receive that as well. And still a man down towards the B. They are coming in from multiple directions, but now the frags begin. It will be Benji to find another one. Flippy hits the dirt. Kicker finding Zen as well for 4v3 as the slaughter continues. Razzled. Dazzled. Absolutely destroyed. That's just ND completely reacting to what they had to. I mean, the moment that player goes down in sort of short water, of course, they need to find some sort of a response. They're immediately put into the four versus five. They don't have a heavy set of utility to go into any kind of execution. So the response, be aggressive, play fast. They do so by hitting up that A site. They overwhelm the defense who are trying to rotate into position, but it very much was the push from Benji as he went into the back of Dumpster and really hammered home the CTs that they were able to seal the deal. So it is Dendi to find the pistol and the initial advantage as Wizards will buy in with Kevlar pistols and some utility of their own. Getting back into this one. There is one man holding that toilet area, but Flippy is dead before he hits the ground as Slap moves forward, taking that position by Storm, and now that A bomb site completely relinquished by Wizards. They have no hold at all. Zen is going to find himself a nice little one dig onto Dumas. So he has to fall back. So he's going to take down Slap as well. Finally, Beng Bibko will take him down. And that is at least one kill, but still three versus three. This is looking good for DendyD. As long as they can hold on to these three weapons, they're going to the next round pretty happy. And it looks like they want to move back over towards that B-bomb site, which initially was a stack for the Wizards. But they've given up on the old stack idea. They've headed back into a more default situation. Still, though, two players on that B-bomb site. Going to be Zepton and Goffy to try and hold this one down. Zepton getting a little bit over-aggressive, but he will find the kill nonetheless. Robin goes down, and now this becomes a pretty threatening round. Ben Bibko and Kicker moving into this one. They have to stay alive, but Ben Bibko is already dead and Kicker gonna fall as well. Wizards, they've just taken this one back. I mean, that's that's incredible. The, the fact that Wizards are into the three versus three is one thing, but at that point, Dendi still had a minute on the clock. They had control of their side. They had, of course, that one man who pushed into short water maybe a little overzealously because he takes the 1v1 with the CT who's playing inside of Sandbags. So all of a sudden, there's two terrorists remaining and they try to execute quickly out Monster, but Harold, they still had entire sets of utility. There were smoke grenades to be thrown, flashbangs to be chucked over the walls, and, and none of that was done. Almost as if they forget, you know, the most standard set execute into that B bomb site, which could have easily sectioned off the Wizards player. Wizards were still inside of water over by Graffiti. These are positions that can be very much counteracted by these smokes and flashbangs. So a real shame here for Dendi as they go down early. Flippy is well going to find an early frag here in the third round as these CTs do bounce back with primaries of their own. In the bio flip-flop and Zeptin has been able to chime in with an additional frag leaving it just down to kicker and dumbs I mean at this point th this is this is not the force buy we saw from the previous round this one is deflated they haven't been able to find a single frag only damage dealt to Zeptin still wizards hold on to pure utility this is a round in the bag and and indeed turned on their head what an absolute uh, upset here early on on overpass yeah absolutely this is a problem we see all the time with NDD not using utility trying to go for the angels and uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it just doesn't. So they do need to be a little bit more careful. We now just Dumas and Kicker left alive. They have to try and get themselves onto a site. Try and get a bomb plant, that's the best they can hope for. But Flippy playing up close and personal. They're unlikely to check his position. Take it down, Kicker, and onto Dumas. But he's not going to find that kill. Luckily, the nade will. Yes, the nade will miss, is obviously what I was going to say. Dumas staying alive for a little bit longer. But I don't see his position being too strong. He does have an AK. But apart from that... There is nothing for him to play with. 10 health. 
has got mate take charges him down, takes him out of the server. That's going to be the second round of the board for Wizards. Dendidi having trouble, but they could be able to buy in the next round. It is going to be in three rounds go to the Wizards. But, you know, it's Dendy Deep. They've got the skill. Yeah, I mean, that's it, right? Like, these, these, are, these are players who are individually talented, but Overpass was kind of questionable coming in, right? Our analysts touched on that, seeing as it is a map that generally Wizards would play more regularly than Dendy. And I think that that really kind of shines through if, if we look at that failure of an execution on the B site when they had the advantage of the smokes and the guns. Um, once they get back into the groove of this game, because let's be real, it is still early on, they have to be sure that they go for those executions. This is Overpass. This isn't Dust 2, where you can just try to overwhelm and strong arm yourself into the bomb site. You need to use these nades, or else this is heavily favored to the CT side. Of course, the terrorists rushing into the B site this time around will go down first and foremost. It is a bloodbath on the ramp. Nobody able to find themselves over top of the crest, but instead they are gunned down in their attempt to close the distance. However, the silver lining, Harold Dendy, has enough money finally to get themselves back into the buy. Yeah, Benji could be on the AWP, but there's no armor for him to play with. He has to go glass cannon on this one if he wants to pick up the weapon. So, gonna be interesting to see what he can pull out of the bag. Wizards so far looking pretty dominant. A very good shutdown over on that B bomb site. Had me choking on my soup. That is always a good sign. As Dendy D now have to work themselves back into this game. They took the pistol round, but they had it stolen away from them relatively easily by the Wizards performing their magic. Now, a little bit of a scary round. Flippy has his own AWP, but he's got armor to back it up. So, Dendy D have to come in large on this. Flippy just looking for any opportunity he might be able to find. So far, Dendy D playing it careful enough to not be picked off. Once they come together, they should be able to put a round in. They have four smokes, they have some flashbangs. Question is, will they use them? Now, I don't doubt they know how to, but this isn't a team. They don't practice together, they don't play together. They're just on here to win a little bit of money. Robin sneaking through, make ticket to spot him out, takes him straight down. And that's one man already dead on the side of Dendy D as they push towards that A bomb site. Interesting to note, of course, I mean, we saw Dendy go for early on push advantage. They, of course, had that AWP out towards Monster, looking for some sort of a pick and a boost in Playground, but it is they who now that are becoming aggressive and dying. Two players sectioned off, completely separate sides of the map as well. So Wizards just lying in wait, doing exactly what Dendy had attempted to do to them, and unfortunately for the T side, it's not yet panning out, but they do still have the utility to go in for the execution. Not all of the CTs have rotated up, although there are three players here and 15 seconds on the clock as Slap takes the first. Goffy is able to find a return frag of a headshot of his own. The remaining terrorists continue to close the distance, but there are players hot on their heels. Duma is going to try to plant the bomb, but Zen rotating up from Connector. He will be a thorn in their side, and the time is not in their team. This is a round for Wizards yet again and additional economic damage dealt as kicker dies after time six hundred dollars is all he gets no paycheck no social benefits absolutely nothing but what he had in his pocket as poor as a caster Harold. as poor as a caster indeed now scrawny i have just read an article that says that canadia will be getting their first television program about esports have we yeah your first I didn't channel about this yeah, you're going to have a whole channel dedicated to electronic sports. How do you feel? You better, you better send me some links after this game then, Harold. I'll consider it. Whoa, my goodness. Zeptin making quick work of these armored and pistoled T-side players. Dendi down to Dumas and Robin in a matter of seconds. Now, Robin is at least able to do a bit of damage control and get his greedy little hands on not only an M4, but then also an AWP. He is looking for the trifecta of kills as he's swapped weapons twice now and taken down two T's on his lonesome. Three CT's still standing, two of which have rotated up to the A site. So cautious they are that there could be a push inbound. Nice little cheeky boost here behind the wall. Maytig going to be the top of the totem pole, but Dendi have slowed their roll. After finding these two response frags, both players on armor and primaries. So they started this one off, of course, with just the pistol Kevlar. And now because of those kills, they put themselves in a very competitive place to play from. Molotov is all Dumas has to his name on top of the M4. So not too much of a smoke or flashbang execution. This could favor Maytig, seeing, of course, as he has the positional advantage. But does he predict the push correctly? Robin is slowly but certainly crouching his way forward around the long corner with the op trained on the dumpster. 
But this boost, you catch Dumas off guard. He's gonna come in for the planters here, and now the spray wildly missing, and Maytig dropped as he attempts to fall. So a two versus two is on the menu, and the bomb shall now be planted. Dumas, the man to put that ticking time bomb down. Robin trying to take a peek with the MVP, but he has to fall back as Zen. Hitting off a little pot shot, Robin. So careful, but he's not careful enough. He gets taken down. It's now all on Dumas. One versus two. Zen and Goffy to play against. There is a kit to play with. Not much utility in their hands. Dumas just being careful. The bomb is for him. They have to find him. If they want to win this round. There is going to be a tap going in onto that defuse. Goffy getting tagged up. He's now going to tap the bomb, but the kill comes in. Zen takes down Dumas. And again, Wizards win themselves around. Looking pretty dominant now. Uh, if Robin had been able to get up maybe another kill. That situation is great. Then DD could have won that round, but it's not going to happen. We need to see players like Benji coming alive. We need to see Robin a little bit more than two kills. And that's just one round's worth of kills. Whereas he's a powerful player. He's the kind of player that walks into a bomb site, shoots four people, and walks out laughing in Swedish. This is true. And so... We anticipate such a play inbound, seeing, of course, as Dendi back on the primary guns, and Benji, the man himself, able to find the opening frag, but Zen with a cheeky boost over the top of the cement wall is able to find the response to slap, so yet again a round where the kills go back and forth quite quickly. However, Zeptin could be next to make contact, seeing as he is inside the bathrooms on the other side of the smoke. The terrorists have made their way down into Connector, so they will be contesting the short control shortly. But Zen is here, and he's ready to receive. Spraying down, he takes two. Excellent marksmanship as he finds the third. Benji takes the response, yet once more, Dendi on the back foot. This is Wizards in an advantage, most certainly, as three players are more than one. But there's a minute on the clock here with Dendi rotating back towards the A site. The uh, patience here from Zeppelin. He laid in wait the entirety of that round, Harold, just sitting inside the bathrooms, waiting for his opportunity to find himself the frag. It is big kills coming in from Wizards time and time again. You think of Zeptin on the anti-eco out towards the top of bathrooms. In that round, we have Zen positioning himself inside of short water. These are opportunistic pushes that are paying off for Wizards quite dividendly. 6-1 the scoreline, a five point lead as at least Dendi do buy in once more. Yeah, so another great round coming in from the Wizards. Just patient, really. Just playing it patient. You know Dendi is a team that's gonna try and get aggressive, so wait out for it. Wait for them to come to you. You're going to get those kills nonetheless. They think that this is a free bomb site, but Zen is in position to take their heads. But as the push comes in, then they have to be careful. Two players playing from short means their position is weakened. And I'm out of the site as well. Robin going to be going down with nothing to his name. Slap the next man to fall. That's the bomb out of control. Why you'd take the bomb and try to push, I don't know. But it's all now on Benji and Dumas. Now both the foreigners in this team, they have to fight tooth and nail to win it. But Dumas decides to take the bomb. And push towards A. That's not going to work out for Zeptin. He's proving why he is the man most favoured to do well in this game. Now, Mr. Scrawny, I have another thing to say. Yep. To my Serbian brothers over in Serbia, I would like to wish you a happy national day. International two-day holiday for the Serbians at the moment. Marking their independence from the Ottoman Empire. So, enjoy yourselves, guys. It is a national holiday. Go out, drink some beer, have some fun after the stream. An additional respect given to the hard-working analysts here at EFRAG TV. Despite a national holiday, Harold, they are behind microphones. Oh, yeah. Dedication comes in all sorts of forms. Don't forget Dendi. the chains on their feet, though. It's true. <laughs> it's very true. We've got pistols and utility laid off for Dendi. And if I can say anything from uh, what we've seen of this T side thus far, I think it's just a matter of discomfort here on Overpass. These are just just textbook mistakes that you see from teams who, who aren't necessarily certain on, on rotation timings and, and map control. The decisions to rotate down connector with nobody inside of short, you open up the wall. That's, of course, what allows Zen to spray down with the bomb into water in the previous. This time, it's Maytig who holds the line with a 3k to his name an additional individual performance for the ages dumas trying to pry into the b-bomb site will find nothing but pressure pushing him backwards pedaling into short to join forces with his teammate as they will re-attempt to execute into the bomb site side by side but the cts have bolstered their defense and so their endeavor is just even harder slap sitting inside of the smoke waiting for his opportunity to pounce as maytig positions himself behind the pillar and does exactly the same. There comes Dumas, bomb goes down, and Slaps quickly joins him. It is an ace for Matic. Yeah, massive, massive play. Uh, right now, it looks like Dendidi's playbook is, is a blank notebook. They've just been to WH Smiths. They've not found anything, so they've got a blank notebook. And that's what they're trying to read strats from. It's not going to work out, boys. There's no strats in that book. 
They need to come up with something and fast because right now Wizards are running away with this game. Or still on Flippy. And they're looking so confident. Only two kills against Matic. He's only died twice. You need to kill him. Slap opens this one up perfectly, taking down Zen. And that's a great way in. But Zen comes back in. Double trade out. Headshot the ground comes in. Matic doubles it up, takes down Benji. He will get traded out. But. It doesn't matter. Goffy, Flippy, and Zepton now. Two versus three. Finally, Zepton will be dispatched of. And Slap and Kicker have a two versus two on their hands. But the AWP will roll on in. What an angle. Oh, it's a tag coming through. As Slap is on 22 HP. Goffy coming in from short. And Kicker watching the AWP flip, making sure he can't get away with anything. That was a cheeky move. I dare say so myself. And Kicker just trying to get away from this position, trying to get himself into a stronger area. Down with an orb. Turns around. Goffy, the shot is going to give the opportunity to pick Goffy. He's not going to be able to get the kill now. All on Flippy. Orb. The orb. There is a kit to play with. There's also a Molotov and a smoke. This should be Flippy all over all day. But he's not using the Molotov. <laughs> he is so certain. I mean, okay, so he's got a smoke Molotov, right? Um, right. Smoke goes down, not on top of the bomb, but on the side of short. That, that that shows you that he's absolutely confident the player is in that direction. And I don't think there was enough information to really justify such a play. If you're unsure of the positioning, then you smoke the bomb. If you're absolutely certain he's in short, then you throw that. Unfortunately, he's just sitting there like a goose on its egg. He has popped to the Glock. The headshot connects. And thus, Dendi find a second round. They've doubled their score count here and now. And they come into this round with weapons once more, but limitations quite clearly as Benji's on the Deagle and Utility not the strongest in this position. So Wizards with ample opportunity to reset their opponents here and now. Flippy early on with the AWP, going to take a position out towards Long A, but this is Dendi going back to what we saw previously on their very first gun round. Slow, methodic play. You spread yourselves all across the map. You wait for any kind of aggression from Wizards, because that's what's really been panning out for them. You think of the 3k spray downs inside of Shortwater, inside of Connector, or even Upper Bathrooms, that's very forward positioning from Wizards, which is giving them the opportunity to catch Dendi mid-rotation. How do you prevent that? By stationing yourself into all sorts of positions or on and waiting for such pushes but nothing is received this time around other than Maytake who goes down first and foremost so the 4v5 is in the pocket of Dendi that's exactly what they were looking for and now they're transitioning into what is proper CS grouping themselves up preparing to strike into the b-bomb site with utility aplenty but wizards as well taking an initiative pushing themselves into short as opposed to sitting on the bomb site so they've now given themselves up for free and put themselves in a perfect position to go for the retake do the T-side, expect this flank. Both Goffy and Zen coming in from behind. Slap with the op train forward. Goes down. Kumas joins him quickly. Kicker takes the trade frag into the 3v3. But the bomb's already been planted and the CT's coming downwards. Frag grenade's gonna hit up Kicker. Quarter of his health is gone. Zeptin finds the headshot. Zen takes down another. It's all on to Robin and he only finds one. Wizards take the reset. Yeah, massive, massive round. So that's going to be no money at all for DendyD. They're going to have enough for Tech Nines and Armor. That's it. If they want to buy an extra round, they have to full eco on this one. But it's DendyD. I wouldn't be surprised if they did just force up. Looks like they are going to have a little bit of discipline on this round. <clears throat> of course, Robin, the only man with any money to his name. Oh, don't. Just pistols, yeah, just pistols. Okay, we're all happy. We're all happy. They're not going for it. So they are going to be able to buy into the next round. Now, this is a 72%. Now, like the desk was saying, this is a very good map for the Wizards. They're a team. They practice maps. Whereas NDD, they're just coming in here, pugging, strutting it out. That's, that's not how you play against a team. You don't pick their map. Not just let their map go through. You picked their map. That's an interesting decision, but so far... Wizards are just taking it. Don't interrupt your enemy when he's making a mistake. Then I'm gonna get this kill through. Dumas completely ineffective. Flash to get taken down, but Benji will come back in with one zip, holding the cross angle. One, one, two, one to the third. He finds it onto Robin now, looking for a fourth to close out this round. Not quite gonna find it, but Flip is in there. It seems whenever someone can't quite finish a kill, Flip is always there with the orb. Just bang, bang, bang. Consistent kills. That's what it has been so far from Wizards. Just absolute consistency from, from their players across the board. I mean, we haven't seen any 
too big of a play from either Flippy or Goffy, but there's been no need for it when the other three men are stepping up, right? There's there's players going down on the T side, and regardless of who's finding frags, it is Wizard across the kill feed time and time again. I would just like to bring up the fact that you mentioned, right, that Dendi come into this a bit of a puggy play, not necessarily being comfortable on this map, and it, I think it shows when they get reset on that B side execution. They put five players through the monster, but nobody goes short. It is nobody inside of short that allows for those two CTs to flank in a four versus five situation and allow for Wizard to come back from that disadvantage. I mean, they set themselves as a standard spread play, find the initial hit, and still lose on the execution forward. If you have the man advantage, why are you not trying to play a two-pronged assault? You have the advantage of the body count, and they let that slip from their fingers. So, Dendi, you gotta show us a little bit more if you think you're gonna do anything on this T side of Overpass. At least this round, they have yet again spread themselves up. They take initial control of Shortwater, so they're able to put themselves into position. But it's the middle round rotations, those mid round calls from the IGL of Dendi that seem to be costing them rounds. I mean, in this situation, they've left Bomb back in spawn, so it'll be interesting to see how they transition into their strike, seeing as they are in still the 5v5. Nades not necessarily there. They will have one opportunity to get into a bomb site off of the double smoke and tri flash. Of course, if that is responded upon by the Molotovs and frags of wizards, then we could see Dendi kind of stalled back or even pushing through damage, seeing as there's 30 seconds left on the clock. This is looking as though wizards are just going to have to hold the line. They've got the positional advantage of the B site. They take Aiken the takes the second, nearly the third, but Robin finds the response. It is a three versus three as the bomb pushes forward. The nades sail through. Molotov's pulling on the site, but no one turns alive. Benji takes the first, and Slap will find another, so it is just down to Flippy. And Dendi have done it, despite a marginal health advantage here for Slap and Robin. 10 and 6, respectively. That is the brink of death if I have ever seen it. Yeah, I really don't expect too much. That was a tear, Flippy. Why is to hold on to his orb at this point? Well, they have been winning a lot of rounds in a row. Their economy isn't as strong as it could be. And so having a little bit of money in the bank is going to help. Now, what is essential is that Dendi D do not lose the next round because that will mean this whole half is down La Toilette. They have got themselves 10-3. If they can find 10-5, they have a chance going onto their CT side. If they cannot find 10-5, this map is over and done with because Wizards will take themselves 12-3. And they'll say, yep, yeah, happy days, move on with that one. Happy, happy days. So, Dendi Diddy, they have to win this round. It's over essential. It's more than essential. It is quintessential. So, Wizards, they have a task on their hands. Beat this round, and basically, they can put their game in their hands as long as they win that pistol round. Important to note, of course, Dendi Diddy did actually win the pistol round. Yet still, we see a scoreline of 10-3. Devastating as the push will arrive. Moving very fast towards this a bomb site. Now these CTs, all they have to do is sit back and shoot. And an enemy comes towards them. You've got the AWP of Flippy watching down towards toilets, making sure no one can get aggressive. I thought it was gonna be a quick round from Dendy D. Luckily, it's not. If they went in fast there, they put a lot of risk on that plate. Going fast, you could lose players quickly. You can get taken down. Instead, they're going to play a bit of a pit game. Unfortunately, Wizards are all playing on the site, giving them no opportunities whatsoever to get into this round. So, Wizards definitely putting it to the man, putting this game to the test. Then DD, the favoured team, are having trouble. Now, here's the thing. I mean, Dendi, they are still kind of congregating themselves in towards the A site, but they have absolutely zero buddy inside of Connector, inside of Shortwater, and these are positions that have been given up by Wizards. You can see that they're worried about the flank, but luckily they're not going to rotate down. They're going to try to hammer this right into the A bomb site. Flippy is going to take long control. He's amongst the wolves. As he turns back round, he hits another close range shot. They weren't able to clear him despite him being in them. My lord. This is going to allow for the bomb now to be going down. Of course, the smoke's stopping the CTs from pushing in. Maytig on the cusp of the dumpster, trying to get himself back into it. The bomb is planted on top of the Optimus Prime, so a bit of an unorthodox plant position could throw some wrenches into the works, but Zen finding himself an additional kill leaves a lot of pressure on the shoulders of Benji, who is inside of Long. He's waiting, of course, for another sort of cross. Only has that one AWP and 13 HP. That is not gonna be enough. He's sectioned off. The defuse comes through. This is a round in the bag for Wizards. See, that is just a huge mistake from Robin. He has the perfect angle to hold off Dumpster there. They're not gonna expect him there. They're not gonna be ready for that. 
all Benji has to do is hold bank and Robin safe. Why he needs to peek bank there, I have no idea. He could have held here. It could have been fine. But it's going to be around for Wizards. And a jumble sale buy from Dendy D. It's a little bit better than I expected because they did get that bomb down. They're going to have full utility. Get the orb out on Benji. But it's still two UMPs for Dumas and Slap. So this could be still a pretty tough round. Molotov goes down to restrict the push. Which was looking likely. But it's still looking like as soon as that Molotov fades, it is going to be the rush coming in towards that B. Bonsai and Goffy to hold. He's not going to be able to do anything. But it's taken down instantly as Maktig now has to take the pieces. Look at the slap. He will find it. Looks like a grenade for some reason. And now it's a two versus four. Not looking great. This Wizards have to go into a very difficult retake. Orp in hand for Flippy. Zapped on by the AK. Now we know he can do work with it, but he has to get into the right position first. And he has to have players peeking him. You can't kill a player that isn't looking at you. As the old pretense says, there is a flank as well coming in from Dumas. He's going to be coming in from the behind. Lippy, this is the last round of the half. Can't save. Yeah, this round is over. Flippy, one versus three. AWP in hand. No utilities to play with. What's he doing? What's he doing? Is he just farming kills? They're not going to chase you. It's all about the stats, Harold. All about the stats. They're not going to chase you, Flippy. What's he doing? Well, not the greatest round there from uh, Mr. Flip, but he has had a pretty consistent game, so I, I won't derail him. Goffy definitely having trouble. Four frags to his name after 15 rounds. But Wizards, 11-4, they should be happy with that scoreline. I mean, yeah, Wizards absolutely have to be happy. I mean, DD have given themselves somewhat of an opportunity to still put together a respectful scoreline. I mean, the pistol and the conversions could really change everything here. They, they find three rounds in, in the very last six of that half. So it was really the reset game that cost them first and foremost, but they were still able to get bombs planted. It was the after plants, the mid round rotations. That's what really cost them. So we will see if they can get their wobbly legs underneath of them as wizards quickly aggress their way in towards bathrooms. Straight down connector, they meet no resistance. Now you can see, this is wizards playing this map to their advantage. You can see now the knowledge of how to play overpass. Look, there's a player still out towards T-spawn. He's the anchor. You have Zeptin in the bottom of connector as well, watching the doorway. And what this opens up is, despite the T-side already pushing up to bathrooms and taking that control, they also have the information that the rest of the map is clear. You have complete knowledge over top of your opponents and despite den dd having the ability to rotate quickly from the a to the b bomb site this is like 85 percent of the map firmly in the control of wizards this is how you play textbook overpass i'm sure now we're going to be seeing the transition of zeptin in from short water so even when they execute into the b bomb site it's going to be a two-pronged assault from both short and monster if you want to see the difference between a uh, experienced and unexperienced team on this map, you watch the pistol rounds between Wizards and DendD. It is so damn clear. They do still have the Molotov and Flashbang here for Zen to play with. He could try to roast the man from the back of the barrels, but instead he's going to use it to section off the guys in graffiti, and now there's no rotation in. Not to mention two additional dinks here toward the T-side. Wizards looking hot and heavy as they have planted the bomb. Forward consistent already inside of graffiti, so the Molotov not only pushing back the CTs, but allowing for them to get into soup Super strong after plants. This is an impressive pistol round. I love the execution, and the kill is still trickling in as Zen keeps wide. He takes the first before Robin finds two to his name. Goffy able to drop Benji from heavens, and so it is only Robin. One versus three. He has the USP. Two kills already to his name. He would need the 1v3 ace clutch defuse on top of it. That is a lot to ask, methinks. I think you think, right, mate? Getting an ace in this kind of a situation is. Uh... It's a pretty tough one. He's going to have to fall back. And that's the round going the way. Oh, Wizards 12-4. to four, And they are very comfortable to win this game straight out of the mark. <clears throat> Shouldn't be too difficult now to win this second round. It's going to be a force buy from Dendy Deep, I reckon. Yeah, it is. Robin picking up the UMP. The rest of them forcing up with just pistols. And of course, if they lose this round, they'll be looking at 14 rounds before they can get a buy-in. And... Uh, it's not exactly positive, is it? Remaining by of Dendy D. Pretty weak. Pistols. Eagles. A flash. I have all got armor, but you really do with armor if you're getting spammed down. AKs. Galils. UMPs. We know the UMP is great in the meta right now. It is a powerful weapon if you know how to use it. Slap. He gets some work done with the eagle. Not going to happen. He's being chased down. He's not even going to escape as Goffy removes his head. 
Benji, the next man to follow him to the grave. Robin now with that UMP trying to do a little bit of work, but there's just no opportunity for him. It's too long range. They have the range advantage. They know where he is. He's trying his level best, but it isn't enough. He's going to be found, tagged up, and eventually fragged. It's just Dumas left now. One versus the world. And the world is chomping at the bit to kill him. Bomb will go down on that A-bomb site. And Dumas left wondering what happened. I mean, this is yet again a textbook execution coming in from the wizard side. They are going to lose one man, Goffy, trying to push into bathrooms, hunting down the remaining CT player. Dumas still standing for only a moment as Flippy finds that last frag. But I mean, wizards now. So they, they, they show us a superb execution onto the B bomb site in the pistol round after taking map control. We see the rotations and the anchors left in the proper positions. That in and of itself is impressive. They get the gun advantage into the second round. And what do you do on overpass? Exactly what they put into their playbook the long A push. You have the weapon advantage, the AKs, the UMPs. These are what you need to really hammer things home because what are the pistols going to do at such a range of engagement? I mean, sure, okay, you might contest bathrooms. Maybe the CTs get a kill inside of that, but there was nothing found, and Wizards continue with their war this time around. Then DD going to be pushing into the fountain, trying to obscure the offense, but instead it is they who have been led to the slaughterhouse. One after another, they topple, leaving only Robin standing with a USP, no armor, no nades, absolutely nothing to his name other than the stock pistol. This is done. Wizards will be 14-4 most certainly, the 10-point lead. Of course, the money even for Dendi is not going to be the greatest, so they're going to have to justify the force, obviously. You can't go for that 11-round comeback, but it's going to be short. There's going to be a uh, lackluster in either armor here or nades or weapons. It's, it's going to be all right, but it's not going to be perfect. We can see already the utility on three players. Flashbang smokes. There's no frag grenades. There's no Molotovs and not a single kit. If wizards decide to execute forward, one of the best things about overpass is that most of the entries into site on the B site, at least, are choke points. You can section that off with utility usage, but if you don't have it in your pockets, then you don't have it to throw. So at least the smokes are here to slow down the players. Coffee put into a standstill, and the T side just looking to play this one slowly. They put a player in the bottom of connector and an anchor inside of the playground waiting for those kinds of transgressions from the CT side, which are nearby. Dumas inside of the party, already keeping his eyes on playground, so he is aggressively pushed forward with support from Benji, keeping down control of both party stairs and connector. These are decent positionings from the CTs, but if they get overpressured, they should certainly fall back. And unfortunately for Dumas, he's in a spot where he can get sectioned off from the connector control, despite having a player nearby to help. And there are two players inching their way up from the bottom of the boiler room. The smoke grenade as well, excuse me, flash to push Benji. May digs here, but he looks the wrong direction, and the 2K's hit. Benji, coming up big. This could be it, Harold. This could be it. Yeah, the way back in. The way, way back. Zen. Still looking for a fire against Robin, playing up close and personal. He needs to get this kill, but Zen will find him. And that's evening it out. There are, of course, 35 seconds remaining. Flippy has been taken down. Goffy does get one in return, but look at the HP. No more than 30 health between both of them. I am not that good at math, so I'm not sure if that's right, but either way. No, it's not. There's 35. Ah, Goffy has to find a kill here. He has to be able to get a frag. There's only 20 seconds left to play with. But the bomb, I don't think it has time to go all the way over to eight at this point even if it did with only 22 hp no, there's no time then just going to hold on to his weapon a uh, bit of an odd round there but a great 2k or 3k even comes in from benji to close down the round 14 a five or four one of the two numbers it's five i thought so yeah my math's definitely not my strong point old um old scrawn old mr scrawn that's all right. I'll forgive you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I and I mean, clearly the uh, the last T side player is not too good at math either, because that that rotation to the A bomb site takes 20 seconds. 20 seconds from the exit of Fountain and the T spawn to get yourself onto A if you take long, and that's cutting corners. So he tries it with only 15, and, and by the time he gets to the top of bathrooms, he too realizes, like you did, Harold, there was no time to play. So the clock working against the wizards. Time travel apparently not within their spell book, unfortunately for them. However, they do have AKs, and that could have been enough to hammer things home had the frag grenade not blown Zen to smithereens. Goffy, of course, is still pinned down behind the sandbags, and he too will tumble, seeing, of course, as the man was boosted, they knew that there was a duo of wizards there in the cover. So they burn one alive, burn the witches at the stakes.
so to say. Five versus three, Dendi in a decent position for the time being, seeing as of course they take an additional frag. Kicker needs to be cautious, he could have had his head on the chopping block. Maytig actually drops Kicker. Excellently done through the wall there. That's a nice little frag to bring it back to the 4-2, but still Dendi hold the line with numbers and utility advantage. Yeah, putting themselves into definitely a good position. There are 40 seconds remaining, but Dendi Deep really don't have an opportunity to get anything done here. Gonna be two AKs to play with. Two Molotovs and a smoke. That's it, really. Uh, the bomb is gonna be recovered. As Dendi D had no idea where that was. Couldn't really get onto it. And it is looking like a sixth round for the Swedish roster. That's the thing with mixed teams. They can either be great or they can be terrible. Right now, they're playing pretty great. But that's only for two rounds. And it may not last. <clears throat> when you have to rely on one player to go big, that is not a winning strategy. So far, it's been Benji and Robin both getting more than one kill in one position. But will they be able to continue that? That is the question. It's going to be the save from Wizards. Hold on to their money. Move into the next round with a buy. Of course, there is plenty of money to be used. And a full buy will be coming out of the Wizards' side. The Battle of the Swedes continues. But Wizards are one round away from taking this to overpoint. Overpoint. That's, yeah, just not really a word, is it? I, uh, I I don't agree with the save there in the Wizards case, because let's, let's look at the economies after this, right? The T-side still has one player who could have dropped a primary, so let's say if one of those two AKs at the end dies, they could still be sitting on five weapons. Meanwhile, Den DD really benefit from that situation, because four players still alive leads them into a position to really start to grow this economy. So if they don't lose this round, then they have been given a bit of a buffer still to play with in the comeback. The slaughter is also reeled down here towards the B site. Four frags already found, and the CTs will be sitting with the bomb on the dirt. Zeptin going to be sectioned off. Grenade to try and close the distance, but the frags continue to rain down upon them. Hellfire has arrived. The bomb has been picked up. Dumas is still going to be positioned inside of heaven, but there are CTs up close and personal kicker on the other side of the water. Wizards, they've read this situation like a child's book. They retreat into the safety of their spawn from which they came and now can look to re-engage with technically the entry advantage. Three to three, T side, push in, execute, trade frag, textbook stuff. Luckily for Den DD, they will still have the advantage of smoke grenades and the incendiaries. They have kits, of course, to go for the retake, but the double flashbang is all wizards will be relying on to obscure the vision of the defenders once they arrive from what looks like Long A. Two players coming in. The bathroom man, Goffy, could be the afterplant. Seeing as he's on 15 HP, you don't necessarily want him to sacrifice his life because then the CTs will definitely have the upper hand. So it's going to have to be up to Maytig. All he's looking to do is use the flashbang, cross to the dice box, and plant this bomb. He has the bomb on his back. Don't look for frags. Look for the plant. That's exactly what he does. He's got support up close and got the anchor. This is great positioning coming in for Wizards. They're playing this superbly. They've been able to take down an additional player, so it is, of course, the 2v3, but there are still mates to play. No. Maytig drops out Dumas. Kicker's able to find the response, so two tag players do remain and both inside the bathrooms. They have to wait as the smoke goes down onto the bomb. Kicker could go for the defuse here, could at least tap it to try and elicit at the push because until he taps it no one's gonna peek you he throws the plat flashbang preemptively but again he has no reason to force these guys out now he's on the bomb he's gonna try to stick it but no siree they hold the spray they find the round and it will be wizards taking this one to 15. they are standing on the finish line Harold. can they cross it let's see the cds yeah. again they have money here to play going back to what i had mentioned earlier about being allowed to survive with four players yeah absolutely Wizards just playing that one perfectly. Like, you said it spot on. They're not going to peek you unless you tap that bomb. And I mean, Kicking just doesn't tap the bomb. So nothing really going to come out of that one. So great round from Wizards. They play it absolutely perfectly. And that bomb goes down. They win the round. Like you say, I mean, you can't break that, down, that round down any better. They played it perfect. Re-engaging, rotating around, playing the timings spot on. And it pays off massively. Free kill for Zen. He's going to be happy with that. And now an opening frag on that side. There is another little cheeky boost Ooh. coming in. It's slapped this time, utilizing that position. They now know there are two men. No, he's not boosted. He's been boosted up. Okay, clever. I like it. 
That's a slappy slap slap right in your face there. Flank coming in from Robin, but the push is successful. Zen makes the entry frag. Molotov goes down to prevent something. I, I don't know what that Molotov was going for. Robin gets absolutely decimated by Goffy, but now it's a three versus two. Looking like a very similar situation to last round, except this time they've actually got health. And it's the advantage firmly placed in the hands of Wizard Slap. Can't really get anything done here. It's the AWP in the hands of Dumas. Not exactly a retake weapon. You've got to say, this is game set and match. Make Tick missing his timing there. Could have ended this. You can't. There's no way that this could be won by Dumas, unfortunately. He's been spotted. He's been tagged. And he is going to be taken down. That's the round. And the game in the hands of the Wizards. Now they have to move on to the next map and hope they can do it. Any passing words, Mr. Scrawn? Yeah, I mean, I think this is just absolute map advantage to the favor of Wizards, and I think NDD, their inexperience with it shine through. We saw it in the executions. I mean, look at the T-side plays from from Wizards on that last round when they're, when they're on the back foot and they close it out on A-side. It's just superb stuff. But like you said, this is only the first map. Mara 